flying off the ceiling, taken by this feeling. Baby, we're invincible. Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Notts County. As always, if you're enjoying the save, drop a like on the video, that'd be tremendous. We're starting on the page of Celso today for a good reason. The first day of January, City, boom, straight in there with a £43 million bid for Celso. Now, I stalled it because that allows you to just defer it for a bit, and I've now rejected it today. But my concern is they're bidding on a player that has agreed a contract. He has a, like, I am unable to offer him a new contract because he's already agreed a contract for the end of the season. So, uh, yeah, if they trigger his release clause, which is being removed in that contract, I will be pissed because I didn't realise that they could just bid on players that have agreed contracts with you. Um, particularly when they already have a... Uh, yeah, so far, the £43 million power is it. He didn't complain about me rejecting the bid and he doesn't seem to want to leave. But my concern is that if they trigger the bid at £78 million, which is what it would cost, it would £78 up front. They've only bid £32 up front so far. But I'm concerned that if they continue to go after him, they may end up triggering a release clause for a player who already has signed a contract with us, uh, which would be freaking annoying. Wouldn't be completely the end of the world as we would still have Gael Perrier, but that would be a real pain in the ass if we were to lose someone like Celso. Even though we'd gain £80 million, it would still be an absolute shitter because he's been phenomenal for us over the past few seasons. A really real rock at the back for us. So worrying times on that side of things. Um, I'm also concerned about a few other players being hounded by other clubs too. I I'm very concerned that we might lose half our bloody squad in January at this rate. Can you show Rob Brain? He played really well for West Ham United last season. Yes. So here's Rob Brain. Um, they signed him from Watford. It was such a weird transfer. Watford did really, really well one season. Uh, and Brain didn't play that amazingly for them. But they were doing really well. So they sold him off to West Ham for £60 million. And to be fair, he's given them a good goal return since then. He looks like he's set to score a relatively similar amount this season too. Fair play to the lad. Matt, you say you've started scouting the youth intakes again. How do you do this? Is it just a case of going to World Transfers and to the youth intake screen? Yes. Uh, World Control W. Uh youth intakes and now I filter it reverse so, because it's all in one thing now you can't do it by month and I just reverse it so that you get the most recent ones first and just go up to the most recent day I did I'm only going to do it on the every other year because we've got a backlog of 8,000 players to look through so this year uh calendar year we're not gonna do that um while we work through the ones from last year sure we might miss out on the other comment players but if there's any players from last season that were any good hopefully we'll find them there's a Slovakian guy I've got on trial that might be one of those so we'll talk about that later I'll be tempted to undertake a mid-season analysis similar to this these videos are great but mid-season review would be interesting from a viewer perspective and also perhaps from a management viewpoint yeah but like come on it's an hour it's another hour of recording and analysis and editing and i just don't have time to do analysis videos more than once a season doing them once a season actually takes up quite a lot of time as well so it's just not something i have time to do in the mind of matt okay football manager you're making me angry you won't like me when i'm angry all right you've done it now i'm sipping the hell out of my water bottle yeah that's still a thing against manchester united last season that broke me that was uh, yeah, completely mugged off in front of your pals. You're damn right. That Silla moment definitely deserved the segment. Yeah, That's Life starring El Haji Silla. I was thinking the same thing. He ended up with the words of the segment with added anger, just no intro. Well, there you go. You got your segment. Just, it was more of an organic one. It was the segment unplugged. We played really well against Chelsea in the live call, the second live from the last episode. And I was confident that, I, we'd, we'd, I think, what was that? that? That was one defeat in like, We'd won like eight of our previous nine games before that as well and drawn the other one away at United. Still played really well against Chelsea. Bit unfortunate to lose, but hey, that's life, of course. Things happen. But Christ on a bike. Like, I'm so bored of having an amazing run. Everything's working. You lose one game no matter how well you play and all of a sudden, nobody's a footballer anymore. It's la magic. First game off camera, we couldn't beat 19th place Bournemouth. Who's surprised? I'm not surprised. Are you surprised? I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, they scored on the 25th, and they probably should have won this too. I think they were the better side in all honesty and probably could have won this match. Latoro Martinez gave them the lead in the 25th minute. Ball was whipped across, goes directly through Alberto's head. I presume it's just because it's the way the match engine is, but like, why is he not winning the header? He's not even near Latoro Martinez, uh, Gomez rather, and he puts it in the back of the net. We then do get level with a lovely header from John Carlos, and I thought, right, we're back in. And then Nelson Guerra gives us the lead against the run of play, I might add, but nevertheless, I was like, finally, we might just be able to scrape it to get back, but then Tammy Abraham is put through and scores for Bournemouth. But like, we go on this amazing run. Our home form is insane. We're playing phenomenal football and then we lose one game and all of a sudden can't beat Bournemouth and probably should have lost. Then against Luton in the FA Cup. Sure, we did win the match, but we had 43 shots in this match and somehow only managed to win it 2-1. And yes, their goal was a direct free kick. That's the fifth one I think we've conceded this year because I think we conceded one in the Carabao Cup too. I don't know what's going on with the direct free kicks. It's a lot. It's annoying. Sure. Uh, two goals for Gerda though. Another brace for him. Seems us through. But 
43 shots and we still only managed to win it 2-1. It's like, ugh, just about. And then we go to Manchester United in the Carabao Cup. First leg of our semi-final. Lose 1-0 to Emmanuel Vignato. Frustrating one. The ball is whipped into the box. He has a shot. It hits our defender. Bounces back. Hits him again. Hits him again. And eventually he's able to put it in. Um, keepers on the floor by this point, of course. So, yeah. Not ideal. Really sort of quite poor, actually. Uh, a couple of injuries for United, though, might help us in the second leg. 1-0 is not the end of the world, though. Um, we've got to play them in the home leg. So, I think maybe we've still got a shot at the final. And so, we might arrange that to be a live comm. Because I think that'd be quite fun. Uh really having a lot on the line, particularly as I want revenge for last season in the bloody Europa League. Nevertheless, though, we find ourselves in fourth place. We've only got one, two of our last five now. We're only one point out into the top four. And I mean, look at the gap that's been closing up against us. We're only four points from seventh now, um, given how things have gone there. Still got a nice sized gap over Watford, which is the main thing. But like, we've played really, really well this season and it just oh, it's starting to tick off. And I'm concerned that we'll end up losing today against Palace too, because the Forms dropped out of us again. Gerda onto 12 goals in the league. Seven assists for him as well. He's definitely on for it. I think he could hit 20 this year and maybe even better his assist record. So that's pleasing at least. We've got that on our side. But I am very worried that by the end of January, we, we might well be missing God knows who. No bids for anyone else just yet. But there's a lot of wanted signs on players. It's like um, a 19th century saloon. So Chelsea drew against Brighton. Ryan Kent, late equaliser there. That is helpful as hell for us. Because uh, now that means we can go above them with a win away at Palace. Alberto is suspended, unfortunately. Um, Lancaster's out. And I'm concerned that Keskin, who has now joined us, is also going to miss this game because he picked up a slight injury. It's minus three today. Good God. So, what are the chances of this happening? Uh, right, this is not looking good, is it? Finish test not required. To me, that means he should be able to start, surely. I think he'll be okay. We'll monitor it, but I don't want to be starting Fernandez at right back. I feel like he has to start at... Sorry, at left back. So, yeah, that's fine. Swap that over. Stepanek, Jean Carlos, Santana, Guerra, Suarez. Lovely. There's talks of potentially Ricky Griffiths going out on loan for a little bit, which I don't think would be the worst thing in the world for the lad. Um... So the bench, Sivertsen, who is the Danish guy I showed you, who's now joined us too. Uh, Moya is going to be leaving soon as well. He'll be joining New York uh, City FC, I think, for like 1.2 million. Palace have an attacking midfielder called Jimmy Burton, and I really like it because he sounds like he should be a NASCAR driver. He's the next Carl Rogers Jr. I'm honestly very concerned that another defeat here could just send us onto an, a, a continuing spiral, because as much as we did beat Luton, it was so narrow. It just felt like we were missing everything. Uh, all of a sudden, the players are just unable to put the ball in the net. And uh, yeah, against United, we weren't great. But on the plus side, Palace are 19th in the form table and our away record has definitely improved. So with that in mind, I'm hoping that we can put an end to our poor form recently and get something going. One slight change, of course, with Keskin starting. Uh, so I'm a bit concerned about the left side being a bit weaker today. Guerrero, the guy that I looked at from Burnley, actually ended up joining Palace in the end for 26 million, uh, which again was more than I was willing to pay. Jimmy Burton driving through everybody here. If you could just not let, or could save by Suarez. I got to tell you, I don't know what it is, but it's once again feeling like one of those games for us. Early doors. Guerrero's bullet. Oh my goodness. Uh, Palace have started very strongly. Bad form never seems to affect the teams we play against. When we lose a game, we go into a horrendous run of form. But when we come up against a team who are on a horrendous run of form, I don't know. Doesn't seem to play like that. But let's see. John Carlos is bullet. Santana cleared away and Flores will pick it up. That's a dangerous piece of play from him. Guerrero's ball in. Howard Bellis and Connell and Flo. Oh, good. <sighs> Angry sipping intensifies. Um. Yeah, I, I don't know. Do you just have to wait until the game decides you're allowed to start winning again? It does just look... I mean, oh my god. <laughs> I don't know. It makes you feel like you don't have any control over what's actually happening, uh, is, is the problem. You feel like you can't actually do anything to prevent it. And of course, I'm not saying that like you shouldn't have form dips and whatnot, but it's just so patently obvious when the dips happen that it's always the same pattern. And he whipped one in. Finds the cross this time. Stepanek! Asman! He's blocked it. And Santana! And he's blocked it! And Stepanek! And he's blocked it! Oh, dearie me. Um, Got away with one there a bit there, Palace. It's the only time we've looked dangerous in the first half. But it is the only chance of the game being created, I suppose. So there is that, I guess. Well, half time and it's 1-0 to Palace. And I'd say that's a pretty deserved lead, to be honest. Um, Yeah. And there isn't a single part of me that is surprised about the way this game is going, unfortunately. Stepanek picks it up. Okay, breakaway chance and lots of room on the right. Uh, sorry, the left rather. And Stepanek's got... Oh, he's got to square this. Please, Thomas, for the love of Christ, square it! <sighs> nah, we are not going to win this game. Not a chance. Okay, chance for us to maybe get level. Garrett can deliver a good one here, maybe. And he's flicked it on and Whittington makes the save and... Sorry. Oh, come on. Are you for real? Of all the things to give us an equaliser. I guess it balances out the one Suarez did, but what even happens here? 
It's a simple header. I'm sorry, that did not cross the line. No way does that cross the line. I'm checking this. Let's just see if we can see this. I don't think this entire ball's crossed the line. I guess, but I don't know. That goal looked very, very sus. Um, I, I've never seen a goal like that happen, where the keepers just carried the ball backwards over the line off of a weak header. The weirdest thing. I feel like on the balance of play, we probably deserve the equaliser, but... To score it like that, Mad Sivertson's now off the bench as well because John Carlos has picked up a slight knock and I want to give him a make sure he can continue. We need him for important matches coming up. So Sivertson's going to come on and try it out in the league. Stepanek is going through a few tackles here and he's all the way in. And a good save by Withington again. And we've definitely improved in this second period. And maybe if we can carry on the uh, momentum, there might be a chance for us to grab the win here. I don't want to press too hard in case we run the risk of losing it entirely. Cool. Cool, 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 and we're 2-1 down now. Um, yeah, I mean, we were great up until we got the equaliser, basically. And then they just completely switched off. Ah, oh, give me fucking strength. Like, where to track your runner there? Oh, my Lord. Guerra, go on, lad. Drills it at goal again, and Withington's there to make the stop. I think we'd be very, very hard done by if we lose this match, given how well we've actually played, generally speaking. And it's Guerra again, and say by Withington. Um, well, there you go. Right then, we're back. Um, it's Arsenal today. Nice, easy one, obviously. Um, yeah, I think the thing that uh, sort of gets under my skin about the fact that it, that happens is that it makes me doubt how much actual influence you as a player have over what's actually going on in the matches in terms of the out outcomes in a season. So we will see. Um, Keskin's injured, but luckily Alberto's back, so it's not the end of the world. It's the full strength lineup at home, which is where we're very strong against Arsenal, sure, but we've been good this year. Like, we've really taken it to the big scene, uh, big big teams, so that's pleasing. I'm going to put uh, Nielsen on the bench instead of Troffin, just because we need a, a right winger. And maybe the FM gods will decide that this is the one where we get the lucky win that then sends you onto a five-game winning streak again. In other good news, City have not come back in for Celso yet in the off-camera game, so if we could just get through January, get to the... Because then they won't be able to bid on him. Get to the summer, he has a new deal, sure, more money, but then his release clause is gone, and that's a really important factor. And all those players that have been putting on new contracts, all their release clause is going to be gone. Hey, if we come back today and redeem ourselves with a victory at home against Arsenal, then that would be fantastic. But it would then leave me going, why weren't we able to do that against much weaker teams? But hey, evening it up, but keeping a lot of the possession is good because it might allow us to win a lot of free kicks. And you know what we're like from those. Santana again. Cuts inside this time. Guerra. And oh, that's a dreadful clearance. And Dubois, please don't shoot. Please don't shoot. He's going to shoot, isn't he? And Santana blocked. Ass man. Stepanek. And cleared away for a corner to up. But another really nice piece of football caused by Santana driving at the defenders. That's a good sign. Because he's got that extra height and defensive capabilities that we want to see. And a good save by Suarez. Oh, we would now actually drop out of the top four uh, as things stand. Despite at one point being, I believe, five points clear of it. But hey, that's life, isn't it? Uh, Stefanik, lovely ball. Guerra has got a finish. <sighs> I mean, what more? What? What? attribute of his needs to be higher he's got 17 on basically all the key ones could they be 18 sure but then the other strikers in the league don't and i'm content that if we keep playing the way we are like they've had half their shots have been from range they have had those two little half chances though but we've had that great opportunity that really you have to be scoring them mm, second half's been a bit lax from us so far i'm gonna try and go down the wide areas because john carlos is not getting much joy i think because the dm sat on him sometimes i just wish we could get him to play an out ball without having to play a more direct approach for the most part that's why I've got certain players on more direct passing, but it doesn't really work that well. Ass man. Lovely ball. Stepanek's in. He's going to shoot. And that is a poor one wide. He's been off the boil lately. Well, we've brought off John Carlos and they've brought on John Carlos. So uh, is that like in school where the other team had such good players that they'd give you one of yours? Santana. But a draw isn't even a bad result. It just looks bad when you look at the other form we've had recently. Uh, if it was in the midst of us still doing really well, a draw at home to Arsenal would be considered a very good point, really, even though we've got some good wins at home recently. This is going to be... A, this is a good point, really, because we've not been very good, like, in the grand scheme. I know we've created some chances, but we just don't look very good still. Um, compared to how we've played at home against some of the other big sides when they've come here, it still looks like we're just suffering from the hangover of whatever is afflicting us currently. Um... I don't know how long that's going to take to go away. I guess we've just got to keep on plugging away until it does, I suppose. Stepanek. Alberto. Oh, my... Well, and this is what I mean about a lucky result when you are in bad form. And it does seem that that might well just be the lucky result. Alberto with his first goal of the season. Uh, look at the goals we've scored today. That weird own goal in the last game against Palace. Stepanek comes across here. Alberto, his initial shot just comes straight back off... Of 
How is that not an assist from Dario Santana is my question. So I didn't celebrate that goal as vociferously as probably I should have done, uh, given that we've just taken the lead against Arsenal. It just feels so strange right now, but this could hopefully be the catalyst to send us back onto some good form. It does once again go to show the strength of our home record, potentially that almost ball it. How does that go through? Why did none of these guys? Oh, you've got to be joking. Well, there you go. Uh, one all draw is a good result against Arsenal, given how well we've played, which was not at all. Um, like, we play West Ham away next. If by some miracle we come up with a random victory, I guarantee you we'll just go on some amazing run after that. Because what a run we were on, and then BAM! Just, yeah. Um, okay, what tends to happen with us is that the goals dry up. Yeah, well, we'll do Man United and Chelsea. Both at home. EFL Cup semi-final second leg. I think that's massively important. Uh, oh, damn, there's Watford after that. Next episode is still going to be Manchester United and Chelsea. We'll do like a special episode after that with the Forest and Man United games just to try to mix it. It's four straight Premier League games at home here. The fixture is really weird. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this episode in spite of the form, drop a like on the video. That would be tremendous. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. And as always, hold your gun, Capybara. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>